We begin with a story to make you even more thankful for whatever warmth and comfort you have tonight. A tale of love and death on the freezing roof of the world. While thousands have conquered Mount Everest over the years, only a few hundred have stood atop the planet's second highest peak because K2 is steeper, tougher, and riskier. Thus, it lures both the brave and the foolish each season. The expedition we follow tonight went up with cameras rolling, men hoping to document personal glory, but instead they captured one of the worst disasters in mountaineering history. Eleven climbers died on the world's second highest peak. You couldn't have asked for a better day in a million years. And only on K2 does a perfect summer day become a deadly day. On a good day, this mountain kills one out of every four climbers. It doesn't take for much to go wrong to be catastrophic. These men and women knew those odds when they posed for this picture. And then tried for the summit. If you do fall, you release, okay? It's our lives too, okay? <laughs> but what they didn't know is they would soon be victim to the worst day on the world's deadliest mountain. 29 would go up, only 18 would return. Release the rope! Jesus Christ. Stop! On that day, K2 would kill the first Irishman ever to make the summit. A 61-year-old grandfather on his third attempt. One guy died. I came up here to help you guys. And one half of Mountaineering's most adored couple. Sail Soulmates in love with each other, an extreme adventure. We are many from uh, US, we are from Nepal, uh, Australia, oh. uh, it's many countries. They fly deep into northern Pakistan, but after hours of spine-rattling jeeps and an eight-day hike, they finally get their first glimpse in person, and just the sight of it fills their blood with excitement and dread. How's it look, Fred? Wow, and... Frederick Strong was among the gaggle of mountaineering teams that converged on K2 two summers ago. Tomorrow's gonna be a very tough day. The bottleneck looks scary. And camera rolling, he got to know the Koreans and Spaniards, Dutch and Nepalese, and American Eric Meyer, a dashing doctor and veteran climber from Colorado. Why I go and try and climb high peaks is that you learn things about yourself, you, you, you know, you deepen friendships. That's the job. Oh, On this expedition, there is no deeper partnership than Cecilia Skog and Rolf Bay, married just a year. She's the first woman ever to climb the highest peaks on seven continents and had a hard time finding boyfriends who could keep up until she met Rolf. And he proposed as they skied to the North Pole. That's when he proposed? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> did he get down on one knee? He did with his uh, skis on. <laughs> Cecilia and Rolf had tried K2 once before, but turned back in bad weather. And this time, even under blue skies, the mountain provides constant reminders of the risk. Jesus Christ. It's really dangerous. There's no safe way to get up through here. Just outside of base camp, another reminder. Dozens of hammered tin memorials scattered with the remains of fallen climbers dashed to pieces. Sorry? You're leg standing right close to a leg. Yeah. More down there. Sorry? There's more bo body parts down there. It looks like it. I can't really tell. <laughs> it is the grimmest possible warning, but it scares no one from the task at hand, testing their endurance on walls of ice and rock. How do you feel? Tired. Yeah? Really tired. The air is so thin, oxygen so scarce, the brain fogs. The muscles chill. When you go up, your muscle tells you, you need to breathe or yeah. you have to stop. Exactly. They spend months on K2, acclimating to the altitude, waiting for the weather to clear, and finally, blue skies. No wind, time to summit. We are working like a one team, no Serbia, no Korean, no Dutch, no America. They know that they have 18 hours to make it up and back before their bodies shut down from lack of oxygen. 
but so many climbers create a traffic jam on the treacherous stretch called the bottleneck. Frederick and Eric realize there is no way they can make the summit before dark. We are really late. I don't know what we're gonna do. Hearts broken, they turn back and are in camp when they hear a scream. What's happening? What do you see? Right in the bottleneck? A Serbian climber named Dren unclips from a safety rope to help Cecilia with her load and then slips and falls. It's blue ice and it's, uh, uh, yeah. Very slippery? It's slippery. He plummets 600 feet, smashing into the rocks, but Frederick and Eric notice signs of life. He's moving. He is moving over. They climb up to help, but Dren has already died. So they quickly hatch a plan to lower his body back to camp. So put this much faster. We enlarge those. With that rub there, no problem. And we auto here. Okay. Frederick puts the camera in his pocket, but doesn't realize it is still recording as Jehan, a Pakistani porter, falls and nearly pulls them all down with him. Release the rope! Release the rope! Release the rope! And then uh, he just loses the grip of the rope. Stop! Body! Body! Jesus Christ! Start falling down. What the hell is this? One guy died. I came up here to help you guys. And Get down. Get down. Get down. Uh, 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 oh, let's go down. Up in the bottleneck, the others have no idea. Two What's are happening? dead. And Rolf is feeling weak in the you? thin air. I'll get you. But not a great day today. A hard day for me today. They know that pressing on means a descent in the dark, a dangerous gamble. Still they push, until Rolf can go no further. So I gave him my oxygen and then I thought maybe he, then he would feel better. But he doesn't, and encourages his wife to go on without him. And she makes it, makes the summit with another Norwegian just before sunset. Oh, it was amazing. It was, it was fantastic. We could see the shape of K2, the shadow. We could see so far into China. It was, uh, it was no wind, the sun was still up. So you, you had that amazing euphoric moment at the, at the summit and you go back to your husband? Did yeah. he celebrate with you? Was he happy for you? Yeah, he was, uh, yeah, he was so happy. That was the way he was. Martin, we're standing at the top of the country! Yeah! A Dutch climber named Wilco is also among the 14 who make the summit. And Excellus, over. He calls his wife with joy. After a lifetime of dreaming and a year of training, they are all giddy. But it is almost dark, and they only have a few hours to get back to camp and precious oxygen. But first, they must rappel under a massive icy overhang called the Serac. And did you hear the ice break loose? I don't think I, I heard it, but... Uh... but I felt it. The falling ice sweeps her husband off the mountain and cuts their safety ropes back to camp. In a daze, Cecilia somehow picks her way down in the dark, holding out hope that Rolf has survived. Of course, he's gone to the tent. That He's in the tent. He's waiting for you at yeah, the camp. Yeah, yeah, but... Uh... Is that when it hit you, when you walked into the tent and he wasn't there? I don't know. I don't know when it did. <laughs>